In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. The readings today call us to respect the dignity of one another, and in that way, realize that when we do so, we're honoring God because he has chosen to make us his sons and daughters. So let's pause a moment and once again, ask the Lord to forgive us of our failings, especially those moments in which we have failed to recognize the dignity of others. You are son of God and son of Mary, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are word made flesh and splendor, the Father Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are our hope and our salvation, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to a people of good Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it and he called out after her, please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten, we shall die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose, but first make a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. to the hungry, the Lord 
who sets prisoners free. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. The Lord who opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. Praise the Lord, my soul, praise the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf, not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice, just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributor contributors to the treasury, for they all have contributed from their surplus wealth but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we hear about two widows who gave from their want, from their whole livelihood. The widow of Zarephath and here this widow that Jesus spots at the treasury of the temple. And we might begin to wonder, well, how prudent are they to give all that they had to live on in charity to someone or something in need. You would think that, as the saying goes, they would learn that charity begins at home. Some years ago, when I was uh, serving in another diocese with many, many pockets of poverty, there was a national collection for uh, some people who lived in Asia who suffered from a great tsunami, maybe you recall it. And so there was a request to all of the parishes in my diocese to take up a collection. I learned later on that a priest unilaterally, a pastor unilaterally, decided not to take up the collection because he said his people were so very poor and it would be a hardship for them to participate. Well, some of the parishioners found out about that and they complained. Are not our contributions 
worth something? Can't we also participate in this? Just because we give a little, does that mean that it is not meaningful? They were complaining that they felt disrespected, that they also had some dignity about being able to give and to help. I think that's what's at issue here in these two scenes of these widows, something that Jesus recognizes about this widow. She gives in a way that demonstrates her self-dignity, her appreciation that she has something to offer even though it is so very little and in fact is from her want. I think so often in life we forget about that in terms of the great dignity that so many people show each and every day by giving of themselves and even though it costs them a lot. I think of those married couples as they grow older and they care for one another in their infirmity and they're spending their whole time and energy taking care of the other. And of course of mothers who bring a child into the world in which she sacrifices her very life in order to bring new life. And I think of those first responders who protect us in our streets, who give all that they have in order to make us safe. And in that regard, I hope that you would join me in praying for the officer Enrique Martinez who was shot this last week and killed in the line of duty and pray for him and his family, asking the Lord to comfort them and to bring him into eternal life. There are so many instances of people each and every day who give of their want and all they would ask of us is that we respect and honor their dignity. I imagine that Jesus, as he saw this widow at the treasury, recognized that in a few days he would give all that he had to give on the cross and in many ways identified with this woman. That was his real dignity his ability to give of himself, even though it cost his very life. That is what we celebrate here in the Eucharist. It's an opportunity for us to learn to have that opportunity to take on a new vision of our life, of what our real dignity means. Our dignity doesn't come from the resources that we have, how much we have in our bank account, what title that we have, how people respect us, our esteem or fame but rather it comes in our ability to give of ourselves for others. And in many cases, like the people that I mentioned earlier, to give everything they have in order for others to benefit. It's important for us in the Eucharist, as we hear Jesus says, this is my body given for you, my blood poured out for you, that we're called to do the same as well. Yes, maybe we're not going to be giving all that we have uh, for the temple treasury or in generosity to others because of the responsibilities that we have. But whatever we give, whenever we give of ourselves in, in, a, in a generous way, it's an opportunity to recapture our human dignity. Like that pastor learned from his parishioners who were very poor. They wanted to make sure that he understood that no matter what they gave, they gave it because they had self-respect. They wanted to make sure that their dignity was regarded and respected. Let us then in this Eucharist once again recapture our human dignity and realize that we are given the power to make a difference in the lives of others by giving our lives for one another. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. 
Jesus empowers us to recognize our dignity as his disciples by calling us to give our lives in serving others. Claiming that dignity, we offer these intentions. That the Eucharist will always be the point of reference of our spiritual lives that liberates us from the temptation to define our lives by material gain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our veterans and their families may be blessed for their service to our country and healed from the effects of war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as our bishops gather this week in Baltimore, may God inspire them to lead the church wisely to greater unity and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed, whom we remember throughout this month, may rest in the mercy of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we ask that the widows in today's readings and the Eucharist that we celebrate spark in our hearts a reminder that our true dignity comes in generously giving of ourselves to others. We ask this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, all the saints who have pleased, who, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order bishops, the clergy, the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Take away this new world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away this new world and mercy on us. <clears throat> Lamb of God. Take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by the sac this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring out of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, my best greetings to all of you, especially those of you who are homebound in nursing homes and hospitals recovering from surgeries and treatments, know that you're close to me in prayer. And again, please pray for the family of Officer Martinez as they grieve the loss of this servant who gave his life for our protection and for all those who protect us each and every day as first responders. Let us keep them in our prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Sunday Mass from Holy Name Cathedral is made possible in part thanks to the generous donations of viewers like you. 